Every so often one of these games shows up where I look at the map and I look at the replay time and they just don't seem to line up. So I think that's exactly what we're going to do today is take a look at a match that was played on seven horses or is it eight horses? Might be eight horses actually. Ooh, Brightworks washed confirmed. Yeah, eight horses version 1.2 and see exactly what went down between these players here spawning on this very strange lane based map. For anybody who hasn't seen Eight Horses, welcome to Beyond All Reason. It's a pretty funky one. There's all these different lanes that are essentially 1v1s, except for the middle here can kind of turn into a 2v2. We can look at that in greater detail later on, but there's a whole bunch of other stuff. Prominently, there's also this massive river that you can fight over as a Navy player. It also locks off two of your players on this northern island over here. Very, very strange. Now, spawning in the water as the red team leader is a Cortex Commander. Goes by the name of 7511. Is this MBT? I feel like somebody said this is MBT under another name. It was either MBT or somebody else. There was some other player that they may have been, uh, may have renamed themselves for one reason or another. But either way, 33 true skill is definitely nothing to scoff at here. Going to be showing us what they've got in the naval field. All the way across the map and spawning up on the northern islands right here is Adenod. Going to be playing as a armada commander here and spawning in blue, going for some of those solar panels and those metal extractors and all that good stuff indeed. Now, as I'm sure you can tell by the length of this video, that will be something interesting is bound to happen here. So I'm keeping my eyes out for plays that are otherwise strange, bizarre, or game ending. Uh, maybe some sort of transport drops, maybe some sort of commander shenanigans here. I'm keeping my eyes out for really, really early, especially uh, transports here. I imagine that's probably one of the most likely reasons that we're gonna see this game end early. One of the things that oftentimes we see ending these games is a uh, morale victory more than anything else, more than economics, more than unit matchups, more than overwhelming firepower. Sometimes it's good enough to just cripple the will of your enemy. And certainly one of the more fun ones to watch. There's a build order that's been going around here. This is another reason why I wanted to watch this because, ah, okay, so we can learn. We can learn here how this build order goes. I just absolutely let my team down in a game that I just played live recently here where I did not know how to do this, but apparently this is the new hotness. You go ahead and build two of these constructors. One of them reclaims the lab. The other of them goes forward to build a whole bunch of these metal extractors. You transport your commander and you fly out on over to this area where you start pumping out ships from way further forward. Really, really neat little build right there. Looks like, uh, yeah, Salt Shaker Live. Apparently not aware of that either, as I certainly wasn't. Good to know. That's a very powerful maneuver right here, because obviously moving these boats from up on up on the forward position right here allows you to pump them out a lot quicker, allows you to get control over these connections right here, allows you a whole lot of extra map space. We do have some uh, rovers, rascals, ticks, and other scout craft headed across the map here. This is a funky little fight going on. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Lobbery Monkey, the orange commander. Wow, does actually manage to bring down both of the rovers right there for the blue commander. Always very lovely stuff indeed. Maroon commander going to be flying on forward into this island area as well. Going to be playing as an air commander, but holding this midsection with the commander indeed. Lovely stuff. And it looks like not going to be contested all too much here by the blue team. Obviously a tremendous advantage for the red team here. Getting the getting control over this big island section over on this northern side. Tons of energy and metal to reclaim right there, but also tons of metal extractor spots. Means that holding on to that is going to be really, really powerful. Especially as you start to move into that T2 game and having just a little bit more metal than your opponent can translate into way more efficient armies over the grand scheme of things. We do have a whole bunch of ticks running around over here. Zydka trying to micro them to the best of their abilities, but so far the red team is doing an excellent job of deflecting most of these attacks, pushing them into LLTs and units of all sorts of shapes and sizes. And that's exactly what we like to see. Frigates coming out on the northern side, the northern high ground, or the northern uh, sea ground over on that side. Sea ground doesn't feel like a real word, but there you go. I'm sure you get what I mean. <laughs> And we do have constructors moving forward here as well for Princess Celestia. Now, as far as skill level goes, we definitely have a wide variety here. You can see going all the way down to one true skill and all the way up to 33 at the very highest. We're definitely looking at almost a color-coded representation of skill level as we're, as we're watching these commanders move forward. So we're going to take it nice and easy here, obviously uh, criticizing, but for the purposes of betterment. I gotta tell you, I've seen some disheartening stuff on the Reddit recently. I feel like I see these all the time about people complaining about the toxicity in this game. I was thinking about putting it, uh, putting out a tutorial. If you're a member of the Brightworks Discord channel, then you probably saw the discussion about that in the uh, main channel. Link down below in the description, by the way. 
thinking about putting out a, uh, a video explaining how to set up noob lobbies so that some of the newer players don't have to jump into lobbies that say they're all welcome noob lobbies, but realistically have been long since commandeered by a higher skill player effectively farming the noobs for open skill. Let me know if that sounds interesting to you down in the comment section. I'm always happy to read your guys' feedback. Let me know what you would like to see if maybe you're a noob at this game and you'd like to know some information about how to set up a lobby for you and your friends or just anybody of relatively the same skill level as yourself. Let me know what you would uh, what you would like to know, and I'm more than happy to set that up. Making bar accessible to everybody, that's definitely my goal. Rat Monkey and Bronut are going to be working together right now. The brown and pink commander is going to be going up against Pillow and Zydka here. Definitely a little bit of a skill mass mismatch right here. 7 OS and 1 OS going up against 28 OS and uh, 31. Going to be tricky to hold right here, so we'll have to see exactly what Rat Monkey and Bronut do get up to. These ticks roaming the around the map are causing so much damage, though. Beautiful stuff. Oh, oh. all right. No D-gun from Moth right here. Uh, no D-gun from Moth right here. Oh, no. Moth's commander, apparently unaware of the almighty D-gun right here. One true skill, so we'll have a little bit of a coaching moment here. Hit the D button, pulls up your D-gun menu, and allows you to immediately obliterate any units that go out on the field. I still remember my first game of Beyond All Reason, learning what the D-gun was and how effective it was. Blew my mind to imagine that the commander was able to defend itself. I now, I now. Tremendous. Luitos and Bing Bing Bang gonna be going up against each other here. We do have some Janus tanks rolling out. Gotta be so careful with those bad boys. Or against those bad boys, I should say. Yeah, Luitos is pretty far forward. He does have a couple of aggravators here to try and contest this. Man, every time those Janus connect with the commander, it really does bring so much HP off of those poor, unfortunate souls. Every Janus missile, every single time, gonna be really, really heavy damage. Effectively necessitating either Resbots to restore everything on the front line, or necessitating some sort of spam like ticks or grunts or anything like that to jump on top of those. Technically, Aggravators counter Janus's. It's a bit of a strange matchup because you have to, as soon as the Janus turn around to run away, you have to move, march into fire. And then as soon as they turn around to try and fire at you, you want to back off. It's a very, very strange matchup, but there we go. Luitos, yeah, moving in right here. Gets the D-Gun on one of those Janus, at the very least shutting down a little bit of that power right here for the yellow commander on the middle of the map. I lost C, cries out, Salt Shaker live. And you can see exactly why. So many units have been produced right here, and then the fact that they hit the front line so much quicker just means that they can take out as many of these boats as they please, and then as soon as we get res bots up there, or res sub, pardon me, we can just eat all that up. I guess the commander really doing that for us right at this point. Looks like the commander went down over here. Oh, no, was that a... <laughs> yeah, it looks like we managed to snipe the commander over here. I'm not even sure exactly how. Another commander falls over here as well. It's actually a trade. It's going to be Luitos versus... Bing, bing, bang, and both of those commanders fall, but most of the units right here for the green and blue commanders do stay up and running, so at the very least, if we get a res bot or another commander up there, eventually we'll be in a pretty good position. Celestia, maintaining control over the southern side. Looks like we've just been feeding units into these LLTs over here. Yeah, I see tons and tons of dead grunts. My goodness, loads of grave robbers here as well. Looks like we got a little greedy with the resurrection. And uh, it's going to mean that we net ourselves quite a few kills, and at the very least, that LLT is a hero. He'll be returning home with the metal wrapped around his long neck. Missile trucks. Decent against grunts, but certainly you have to have them in numbers. Not the case here. Blitz is trying to clean up this mess right now, but I think there's enough. Yeah, those thugs are very sturdy. Going to be really difficult for those blitzes to take down. And with those thugs pushing that back, going to be near impossible to hold this midsection of the map right now for the red team. Are we going to go for some sort of cheeky transition here? Maybe looking... Sorry, trying to clear the drawings right now. Are we going to maybe look into maybe going for some sort of rapid onset air transition? Are we going to try and do some bombing right now? I don't see any bombers on the map yet. Usually the uh, Maroon Commander, which indeed they are the air player, usually would be going for some bombers. We are going as an Armada Commander though, which is interesting because of course those Armada bombers, not nearly as powerful as the, uh, oh, indeed, it looks like the red commander is actually on the same page. You can now eco and look for bomb. Yeah, once this lane has been won, gives you a lot of comfort to start moving around, start maneuvering in better directions. We do have a T2 transition up right here. Effectively paying for losing this front line right here with a T2 transition. Was it all worth it for YBB100? I'm not sure quite yet. Meanwhile, Pillow pushing forward right now. Rat Monkey trying to hold the line. And again, those missile bots, or uh, missile trucks, pardon me. Decent. Very decent, but they're such a heavy investment for not assured damage, right? You never, you're never sure if you're ever going to take an efficient fight with those. 
so much micro as well to keep those in the fight. Oh no, Pillow running out of D guns right here. 10%, 9%, my goodness, 8% left on that commander. Down to six now. Very, very close call. The uh, Shell Shockers right here from Princess Celestia blowing down the commander and all these units on the front as well. That's a funny use of those, sh those uh, Shell Shockers, but yeah, why not? Using your Shell Shockers to fire over this mountain range and onto the forces of Pillow is so uncomfortable. Making that into a 2v1, really, but without Pillow actually realizing it, I think. That is hilarious. At this point, missile trucks are built in enough numbers that we're starting to blast apart some of these cheaper units. The pawns, as well as some of these aircraft, actually having these underneath the air wall over here and shooting down some of these T1 airplanes is definitely quite nice. 7511 has won the naval field, by the way, and has thoroughly wiped their opponent off the map, going to mean that at least for the time being, the sea is well conquered by the red forces, cutting off the access from two of these commanders on the northern side, relieving pressure and spiraling this closer and closer towards the red team's victory, despite very, very prominent early aggression right here from the blue team. It eventually didn't pay off when slowly but surely investment after investment was made into units that got traded out inefficiently on the front lines, and we find ourselves here and now. Suddenly, missile trucks going on an assault run. Okay. <laughs> Rare that we get to see the missile trucks moving forward, but I suppose when in Rome. There you go. One by one, these pawns are being blasted apart here. How much damage does one of these do? It looks like it's about, oh, I want to say maybe 15% damage per missile that's fired away right there. We did have a T2 transition right here. Sheldon are not the way, though. Fiends should definitely be mass produced right now and ran head first into these and self-destructed could probably blast these apart in two or three self-destructs very very efficiently but unfortunately not going to be the case here as pillow does start to come under fire from the backline missile truck harassment my goodness what a bizarre match right here a nice beautiful multi-prong as well medium tanks to push forward through the line right here abusing poor moth who has not quite learned the pace of the game shutting down this base with that very, very early T2. The T2 transition that was funded with essentially nothing, neither a win of a positional advantage or a uh, any kind of reclaim advantage. Just like that, Celestia blowing apart two of her opponents right there on the southern side, mopping up a whole bunch of those wind turbines and continuing the aggression up north right here. Missile trucks for the win, my goodness. Missile trucks were not on my docket as ways to early close out the game, but I suppose if we're just gonna ignore the issue for long enough, there you go. Missile trucks now on the back line and blowing things apart. There we go. Resigning votes called across the map right here. Pillow calls the resign vote. The blue player has already tapped out of this game as well as the, well, entire rest of the blue team. And there you go. It wasn't a flashy comm drop. It wasn't a T2 cheeky risk. It wasn't anything like that. It was just good old fashioned aggression. Units on the field, metal deployed across the map. And sometimes it really is just as simple as that. Maybe that's an excellent example of exactly why you gotta put your feet out on the field, get your feet wet in the water, and maybe put your hand out on the front lines rather than going for that T2 advantage and it starts to win you games. Definitely a wonderful, wonderful map, match right here. If not a long one, definitely a concise one showing us exactly how it's done. And I'm very glad to have seen how that naval build order goes because I'm gonna try that out for sure in my next match. Sure hope you have a great rest of your day and I will catch you in the next one. Peace out everyone.